They must organize a revolution against that injustice, not against the life of the persons who are their fellow citizens, but against the structures through which the society is refusing to take means which have been called for and which are at hand to lift the load of poverty. The only real revolutionary, people say, is a man who has nothing to lose. There are millions of poor people in this country who have very little or even nothing to lose. They can be helped to take action together. They will do so with a freedom and a power that will be a new and unsettling force in our complacent national life. Beginning with the new year, we will be recruiting 3,000 of the poorest citizens from 10 different urban and rural areas to initiate and lead a sustained, massive direct action movement in Washington. Those who choose to join this initial 3,000, this nonviolent army, this Freedom Church of the Poor, will work with us for three months to develop nonviolent action skills. Then we will move on Washington, determined to stay there until the legislative and executive branches of the government are taking serious and adequate action on jobs and income. A delegation of poor people can walk into a high official's office with a carefully, collectively prepared list of demands. If you are poor, if you are unemployed anyway, you can choose to stay in Washington for as long as the struggle needs you. And if that official says, but Congress would have to approve this, or but the President would have to be consulted on that, you can say, all right, we'll wait. And you can settle down in his office for as long a stay as necessary. If you are, let's say, from rural Mississippi and have never had medical attention and your children are undernourished and unhealthy, you can take those little children into the Washington hospitals and stay with them there until the medical workers cope with their needs. And in showing your children, you will have shown this country a sight that will make it stop in its busy tracks and think hard about what it has done. The many people who will come and join this 3,000 from all groups in the country's life will play a supportive role, deciding to be poor for a time along with the dispossessed who are asking for their right to jobs or income. Jobs, income, the demolition of slums and the rebuilding by the people who live in it of new communities in that place. In fact, a new economic deal for the poor. Why camp in Washington to demand these things? Because only the Federal Congress and administration can decide to use the billions of dollars we need for the real war on poverty. We need not a new law, but a massive new national program. This Congress has done nothing to help such measures and plenty to hinder them. Why should Congress care about our dying cities? It is still dominated by senior representatives of the rural South who still unite in an obstructive coalition with unprogressive northerners to prevent public funds from going where they are socially needed. We broke that coalition in 1963 and 1964 when the civil rights and voters' rights laws were passed. We need to break it again by the size and force of our movement. And the best place to do that is before the eyes and inside the buildings of these same congressmen. 
the people of this country, if not the congressmen, are ready for a serious economic attack on slums and unemployment, as two recent polls by Lou Harris have revealed. So we have to make Congress ready to act on the plight of the poor. We will prod and sensitize the legislators, the administrators, and all the wielders of power until they have faced this utterly imperative need.